So hello guys, welcome back to our channel. So in the last two videos, we have been seeing about the introduction to the cardiovascular system, uh, the properties of the cardiac muscle, also the organization. And in this video, we will be seeing about the cardiac action potential. So first of all, what are the learning objectives? There are two types of action potential in a cardiac uh, muscle cell, the fast and the slow type. We will see that. And also we will discuss the ionic phases of this cardiac action potential, one in the slow slow type the other one in the fast type and also finally how we can control this cardiac stimulation so firstly cardiac action potential are of two types uh, the fast fast uh, fast potential and the slower the slower is also called as the pacemaker potential because these are present in the pacemaker cells of, uh, of the body which are the nodal cells uh, like the sa node av node and the purkinje fibers also and the fast type cells are uh, present in the conducting and the contracting cells of the heart like the muscles of the ventricle, atria and the ventricle. So we will see uh, the ionic basis of action potential first of all in the slow type, an example SA node. In SA node, basically uh, we see that the heart doesn't stay at rest. For a uh, cell to have a resting membrane potential, it is first of all be at rest. But since the heart is always in its pumping uh, responsibility, we don't have a no, no true resting membrane potential. So since there is no true resting membrane potential, we can uh, not define the RMP value. But one thing we can say is that the least action poten uh, least uh, uh, potential level it can go is minus 55 to minus 65 uh, millivolt. So this is the not the true value. This is just assumed to be the resting membrane potential. And also we see that the RA SA nodes are all self excitatory. What is uh, the reason for this is that they have inherent uh, leaky channels like uh, inherent leaky channels for sodium and calcium. So this will cause the self excitation and uh, uh, the pumping of the SA node. So uh, we will take a graph and then see that here will be the voltage. So as I said, the, uh, the resting membrane potential value will be somewhere around here, minus 60, the average of minus 55 and minus 65, let us, let us say it is uh, minus 60. And also the threshold for SA, uh, SA node is minus 40 millivolt. So this is minus 40, this level. So uh, the initial phase, there is a small opening of the sodium channels. Already there are a few sodium channels that are already open. This is called uh, caused by the sodium channels that are sodium channels that are called as the funny channels. We will see why is it called funny. The second is that after the funny channels are opened, it uh, reaches the threshold. So the first sodium channels are all already open. They are le the leaky in nature, and also there is a sodium concentration, high sodium concentration outside in the e ECM. So two the reasons cause the sodium channels to stay open, and this will cause this uh, potential to reach the threshold. After threshold, it will uh, climb again rapidly. This uh, rise is could be caused due to the calcium channel, L-type calcium channels. L-type calcium channels are also uh, again leaky in nature, but the reaching of threshold will stimulate it further and uh, make it uh, even more active. Also, we see that before the L-type channels are active, at this part of the stage, we, we see that T-type channel, T -type channels are active for a moment. Just for a small time, uh, T-type channels are open. So, uh, in type, uh, sodium channels open, they are leaky in nature, they carry the potential towards the threshold. After the threshold, L-type uh, so calcium channels get activated. And as soon as uh, we see that the, both these inherent uh, uh, leaky channels of sodium and calcium do not persist forever. At this point of time, when there is when they reach the highest peak, the L-type channels begin to close. After the sodium channels begin to close, there is uh, increased permeability for uh, potassium. At this point, the L-type channel close and also the uh, K plus uh, potassium permeability will rise. So this will allow a huge number of potassium to influx. Here there is an uh, influx of sodium and calcium and at this point of time uh, the potassium will 
efflux i would sorry potassium will efflux so this will again bring down the potential back towards the minus 60 stage so but this uh, potassium efflux doesn't stop at this point of the uh, cycle it doesn't stop when it reaches the threshold it will be persistent till it reaches the uh, least value so again as it comes here this uh, potassium channel this potassium channel will trigger this uh, leaky channels to open leaky channels open funny leaky channels open and again the cycle continues so what is happening first the depolarization uh, or the rise in the potential is caused by both sodium channels as well as l type calcium channels or if you consider t type cha calcium channels too after it reaches the highest point the uh, l type calcium channels begin to close and the potassium permeability rises which causes the potassium efflux and after the efflux uh, repolarization happens and till this point of time it is called repolarization this is depolarization this is repolarization and this is hyperpolarization because the repolarization is in stopping at the level of the threshold it is taking it back to the least value so this is called hyperpolarization and this hyperpolarization is stimulating the na channels to open so i hope you would have understood and after seeing the properties of the ionic bases in the potassium we will see the power, what is happening in the what is happening in a uh, uh, fast type or the cardio we will take the example of a ventricular muscle so in the ventricular muscle uh, we see that the least uh, at the least point the resting membrane potential will be minus 85 millivolts so it is listing at the level of minus 85 volt we will take again a graph in this graph the potential is around minus 85 at this time minus 85 and at this point of time fast calcium sodium channels will begin to open as soon as this fast sodium channels are opening fast type fast type sodium channels are opening the potential rises to a very high level to the level of to the level of plus 20 so you can see that from minus 85 to plus 20 there is a rise of 105 millivolts this is caught solely by the fast type sodium channel in a very short of very small time this is the millivolt sorry millisecond and here is the millivolts so after it reaches the highest uh, value uh, at this point of time there is a small uh, increase in permeability of this potassium channels so here uh, sodium is influxing but at this point of time k plus efflux happens but only for a brief moment because the permeability increases and again it begins to uh, drop this type of sodium channels are called as the fast sodium channels uh, these are of the fast type but this is happens for only for a brief moment it will again uh, repolarize but that repolarization doesn't continue till through the level of minus 85 it just stops there and after the uh, reaching to a value around uh, say 10 it will uh, the calcium channels will begin to open and this type of calcium channels are called as the l type calcium channels l type calcium channels if you see that uh, l type calcium channels are l type channels are slow and also they remain open for a longer time remain open for a longer time so this will cause the formation of uh, plateau which will we will see here this plateau formation is a very important feature in a cardiac muscle because it gives the highest higher refractive period uh, give a high refractive period and also gives the non fatigability later so this uh, uh, state of being uh, depolarized will have to stay for a minute for a moment a small time of a uh, small amount of time the sodium channels uh, sorry l type calcium channel will remain open and after after that again the calcium channels begin to close at this point of time uh, l type channels close and uh, the slow type of the calcium potassium channels 
begins to open. So again, I will brief it out. Here, fast type sodium channels open that will cause rapid depolarization, taking it from minus 85 to plus 20. At this point of time, uh, potassium reflex happens, but only for a brief moment. This type of uh, channel is called as the fast type of potassium channels. They begin to uh, repolarize, but only for a brief moment. And after that, L-type calcium, channel, uh, calcium channels open, and they stay open for a small amount of time. After that, they also close, and now the slow type potassium channels again open. This was the fast type, this is the slow type. And this will slowly take it towards the resting membrane potential. Again, this is coming to a value around minus 85 or minus 90, it varies. So, in this part, we have seen the five basic types. We will see the divided into five phases. Phase 0, phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, phase 4. Phase 0 is the depolarization. What causes the depolarization? The uh, fast, fast Na plus channels are causing the, the depolarization. This is the zero phase. And this small spike, this is called as the initial spike. This is caused by Na plus channel close and K plus faster type will open. But only for a brief amount of time. And the second this plateau this is called as the plateau this is cause uh, the reason for this is the l type calcium channels and after that the phase 3 phase 3 is the original repolarization the pro correct proper repolarization rapid repolarization because as i said this is happening for a brief amount of time but this happens for a uh, taking it directly towards the minus 85. What is causing this? The slow type of K plus channels. And after that, so slow type channels take it towards a value of about uh, minus 90 millivolts. And this is the resting membrane potential value. So, in this uh, activity of the SA node, we say that the gra uh, potential graph, ionic activities of the graph with the SA node is like that. But in the ventricles, the uh, activity is like a plateau. So it will be like plateau. As, uh, as long as the plateau is maintained, the muscles will contract uh, together. The muscle will stay contracted for a longer time. That is why we have that the muscles, the uh, cardiac muscle, they have a longer refractory period. They uh, remain contracted for a longer time. So this blue color line is the electrical activity and the red color line is the contractile activity. You can see that as long as the plateau is maintained, the ventricle is staying in the contracted phase. So uh, when you see the rhythmical action potentials of the ventricles, you will see the structures like it will form a plateau like this. So these give the important properties of the uh, heart. The plateau is mainly basic, uh, mainly reason. Uh, the reasons for the plateau is that plateau. The reasons are that uh, L type L type calcium channels remain open for a longer time. Remain open, and also uh, remain open, and also the calcium permeability is reducing. Calcium efflux is also reducing. So there is no repolarization, and there is a continuous stage of depolarization. So these are the two properties we will be we have seen then. And finally, we come to the stage of control. What is the reason for the control? The control is uh, cost, as we just saw the ionic basis, the effects we are going to see will interfere in this calcium, potassium, uh, sodium channels. So there is two types of uh, control. Control, we basically have two types of control, the sympathetic sympathetic control and the parasympathetic control uh, if you know the sympathetic control will increase the heart rate will cause uh, uh, vessel contraction will increase the heart contractility but the parasympathetic will this will increase the heart rate this will increase the contractility uh, this will cause contraction vascular contraction but this on the other hand will reduce the heart rate will reduce the contracting strength so the sympathetic channels were said to be interfering with the sodium and calcium channels. They will increase the per permeability of both sodium 
and increased calcium channel permeability. So this will allow a large number of uh, sodium and calcium to uh, enter into the cell. So the already we see that the, the, the normal stage it is staying at around minus 55 to minus 65. But due to the presence of increased uh, sodium and potassium calcium uh, influx, the value grows more towards the positive value. Once it was uh, say minus 65 to minus 55, now it will be around minus 55 to minus 45. So it will be easier for the uh, nodal cells to reach the threshold. They are already near very close to the minus 40 threshold. So they don't have too much, uh, have to stay longer time. So the stay time between uh, reaching of the self-excitation and the success of self-excitation will decrease so much and this will cause the increased heart rate. I hope you can understand because it is easier for the cells to reach the threshold. The heart rate is also increasing and then the contractility also is increasing because the heart is having a pumping at a very huge force and they are pumping out a huge volume of cardiac output. So in the SA nodal cells, this will have two effects. Um, there will be having a more positive resting membrane potential. The ones who are minus 55 will be now minus 45. And also the rate of drifted towards the threshold potential. As there is a very small gap between the current stage and the threshold stage, they will reach threshold faster. For, but on the AV node and the Purkinje AV nodal cells, they don't have the responsibility to self-exit. They have to receive the impulse and transmit it to the next one. So for them, uh, the ability to uh, transmit the impulses will be easier. So they have the easier transmission. And both of these uh, effects will complement to increase the heart rate and all those things will happen. But on the other hand, vagal system or the parasympathetic system the parasympathetic system will reduce uh, pro produce acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is the, the neurotransmitter or neurochemical that is released from the vagal nerve endings, but the sympathetic on the other hand will reduce, uh, release norepinephrine. These norepinephrine will interfere with the alpha adrenergic receptor. And the acetylcholine will increase the here the calcium and uh, pot, uh, sodium channels were increased permeability, but here the sodium potassium channels are increased permeability. In the potassium channels permeability increases, so they will have more negative, uh, which is the efflux. So they are already having a minus 55 to minus 65 uh, stage, but this will push it towards minus 65 to minus 75. So uh, the once it was at this level, now it is pushed toward a much lower level. So it will be easy, tougher for the cells to reach the threshold. It uh, reached the threshold. Say the threshold is here. It was just a small amount of gap when it was in the normal stage. But the parasympathetic uh, the innovations will make it difficult to reach the threshold. Uh, this is also making it the less excitable. It is harder for reaching the threshold and also the resting membrane potential is getting lower. Both of these will complement to give increased heart, decreased heart rate because the time period between two uh, successive cardiac stimulation is uh, getting raised. This will reduce the heart rate. So I hope you would have understood uh, this topic cardiac action potential. Today we have seen about the two types of action potential, the fast and the slow. The slow is also otherwise called as the pacemaker potential. Uh, example of a slow uh, potential action potential is seen in the sodium SA node, sinoatrial node, while the fast is seen in the muscles of the heart like the ventricles and atrium. The ventricles exhibit plateau type of nature which gives it the longer refractory, uh, refractory period and giving it the property to be non fatigable and the control. They can have to control innovation, sympathetic and parasympathetic innovation. So thank you.